You guys really seem to like my last tiny budget GPU video where I upgraded my home server slash home theater gaming PC with the RTX A2000. But today we have something that's even better than that. This here, ladies and gentlemen, is literally my favorite GPU launch of the past year. And you're in for a treat because not only am I taking you with me as I upgrade this PC, which I desperately need to use more of by doing some couch gaming in my basement, but we're also going to be doing a low profile GPU landscape update and benchmarking a ton of graphics cards because a lot has changed in the last one to two years. All of that comes after a quick word from today's sponsor. Since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor GVG Mall can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself and they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. We'll start with this new GPU launch, and this here is the Gigabyte RTX 4060 Low Profile, and I've been talking about this ever since we got some unconfirmed rumors about it earlier in the year. I actually made this YouTube short and TikTok talking about the initial rumors, and Gigabyte saw that video and reached out immediately after afterwards asking if I wanted the graphics card. Shout out to them, by the way, for actually keeping an eye on creators like myself talking about their products. That's actually great work. So here we are with the card in hand, and honestly, I have two of these because I bought one before they sent that email. I'll use the other one for an OEM PC, so get subscribed for that. For the specs of this card, this is indeed a full desktop equivalent RTX 4060 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, DLSS3 support, third generation RT cores, and as far as I know, this isn't a stripped down version of the full size RTX 4060 in any way. We actually bought a full-size 4060 specifically just to test those cards head-to-head. -head. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. The other important factor about this low-profile design is that this is the first triple fan LP card that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's some weird non-popular models out there, but this is pretty long coming in at 182 millimeters. Seven inches? That's pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> this card is obviously designed for server builds like mine or even OEM desktop PCs, but oftentimes you will have a GPU length restriction in those builds so it's definitely something to keep in mind. Thankfully, it fits perfect inside my home server. And as far as ports go, there's two display ports and two HDMIs, and this is much better than the RTX A2000, which has all mini display ports, which require adapters. And finally, this card does come with both a full length and low profile PCI bracket, so you can install this in pretty much whatever build you want. But now before we start talking about the benchmarks, I do wanna go over the overall landscape of the low profile graphics cards because a lot has changed in the last one to two years. And if you know anything about me, you'll know that I absolutely love this tiny little sector of our industry. I've been using low profile graphics cards for many years inside different rack mounted server projects and even OEM office PCs that we converted into gaming PCs. Some of those really good OEM PCs come in the small form factor where you can't fit a regular size graphics card in there, so you have to resort to an LP card. Our options are way more limited with LP cards, but the option list did expand pretty nicely this year and I'm gonna try to summarize it for you real quickly. Before we even show the benchmarking numbers, I'm just gonna let you know that the RTX 46 the LP that comes in at $325 is definitely up there as a top of the line option. And spoiler alert, it's not even close. And as of writing this, Gigabyte has the only RTX 4060 low profile card, but we may see more manufacturers come up with a model at some point. I don't see why they wouldn't. Below the RTX 4060 LP, we have the also new RTX A2000, and this is what's currently in my home server build. I just upgraded this card two months ago. I was so excited about this $250 GPU because it's on the RTX platform and it's much better than the other models that were available at the time, but the problem is that this is not a graphics card for gaming. It's a workstation card, so it's not going to get all the game optimizations and driver support that a gaming card would get. Instead, it relies on raw horsepower to carry it through games, and it can definitely play any title in 1080p, but that's not what it's originally designed to do. Now, for our more budget LP cards, we also have AMD's RX 6400, and I've used this one a few times already as well, and it's not a bad option for someone that's looking for a $150-ish LP brand new. Nvidia's GTX 1650 LP is also an option as well, and it's relatively the same performance as the RX 6400, but this one you can sometimes snipe for $100 or so on the used market. It's honestly pretty difficult to find these at that price though, because there's just not many out there, but this card has been regarded as one of the best options for those super budget 1080p OEM gaming PC builds, at least until now. And as of just a couple of weeks ago, there's now one more card that we should now consider, but unfortunately I don't have it here because it's brand spanking new, and that's Intel's A380. ASRock produces this low profile A380 for about a 
$100, and this is definitely a card worth considering in the $100 price bracket. The A380 is about the same performance as the GTX 1650, at least from the benchmarks that I've seen. So if you're considering a $100 to $150 LP card, this one is probably the one to get so you don't have to spend time trying to snipe a used 1650. Now for today's video, I'm mostly going to be focused on upgrading to my new RTX 4060 LP, but we're also going to be benchmarking all of these other cards just so you can see how they compare against each other. My home server slash home theater gaming PC isn't necessarily the most accurate setup for a testing rig, but instead it's a very realistic one because again, this is where people are using LP graphics cards. Inside my build for the CPU, we have an Intel i5 10400F. We just upgraded from the 10100F in the last home server video, and we also have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 clocked at 3200 megahertz. This is all inside a Rosewell 2U chassis, and I actually have two server builds inside this case inside my home server rack because I absolutely love it. And of course, I also have my build equipped with a flat Noctua brown CPU cooler because that's just what home lab nerds like myself do. And like I said in the intro, I just don't use this PC enough. As of right now, it's currently just powering my display down in my home theater in my basement where we have a huge 120 inch projector. The majority of that use is just watching the Steelers and NFL Red Zone, but I do intend on playing games on here for those super comfortable and relaxing couch gaming sessions. This new RTX 4060 LP is packing so much performance that it's actually motivating me to use it even more and get my money's worth, well, gigabytes money's worth. The other thing that I do with this build is on the more home server side of things, and honestly, the majority of that is just being my Plex server. I host all of our TV shows and movies on Plex where all the data is stored on my Synology NAS, which is a bit higher up in the server rack, and I also run some virtual machines on this system as well. Honestly, nothing too crazy in the home lab side of things for this specific build. But now that we have the foundation for everything we're about to do laid out, let's start running these numbers because honestly, these benchmarks really surprised me. We're gonna first start benchmarking the four low profile cards that we have here today, and not because it's gonna be a close comparison or anything, but honestly, it's just to show the big difference in what's available on the market these days for LP cards. Starting with 3D Mark Time Spy, here are the results that we got, and I'm gonna lay all these charts out like this moving forward. As a reminder, we're upgrading from the RTX A2000 to the RTX 4060 LP, so that's why I have both of those in green, and then the other two cards are the more budget 100 to 150 dollar ish LP options. Clearly you can see a huge difference in the RTX 4060 LP as it's a massive 57% boost over the A2000 and it's a 168% boost over the 1650 which is what I had in there before the A2000. Again that was just two months ago. I just want to re-emphasize that before the RTX A2000 came out just about two months ago the best LP card that we had on the market was pretty much just the GTX 1650. They've made some serious strides in the LP department in the last year or so. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and with this new 2.0 update, we're getting a crazy 103 average FPS in 1080p with medium settings. The A2000 did pretty well with 64 FPS, mind you, and then the other two budget cards are lagging behind in the 30 FPS region. After that, you know we of course benchmark Starfield, and even when using 1080p low with a 100% resolution scale, the RTX 4060 LP was the only card that managed to get above 60 FPS. Again, this is one of, if not the most demanding game on the market right now. The brand new Assassin's Creed Mirage is up after that. I love that they continuously include a built-in benchmarking tool, so expect to see this on the channel for the next few months, and here are the results using 1080p and high settings. And speaking of brand new games with a built-in benchmarking tool, Forza Motorsport just launched this week while we were filming this, so instead we use Horizon 5, but it'll probably be the last time we do that. Here are the results we got for 1080p high, and it's great to see the A6400 and 1650 hanging out there around 60 FPS with high settings, and then our RTX 4060 is getting over double that result. And finally, we have Modern Warfare 2, just using the built-in benchmarking tool for this one as well to make things easy for comparisons, and in 1080p high, here's the results that we got for that. Real quickly, as a digestible recap, this RTX 4060 LP is miles ahead of the more popular budget LP cards available, but the increase over the RTX A2000 was actually much bigger than I expected. On average, across these games that we tested, the RTX 4060 LP did 52% better than the RTX A2000, and that's pretty wild considering how dominant the A2000 was when it launched just a few months ago. I was honestly super excited when I upgraded to the A2000, and now I'm getting already 52% more performance than that, it's official. My projector that's 1080p 60 hertz is officially the bottleneck here. I am officially back. Yes! Yeah! Now, before we wrap up, the other benchmarking run we need to complete is the Gigabyte RTX 4060 LP versus a normal desktop size RTX 4060 because I wanted to see if it was stripped down at all with being a smaller card. And I'm honestly not smart enough to really know what goes on when they take a desktop card and essentially cut it in half, but what I do know is that the benchmark do not lie. Here's the games that we tested, a few more games than our last benchmarking run, and as you can see, all of these results are within a margin of error, and we're getting essentially the exact same performance. All of these charts 
reports completely confirm that this is indeed just the normal RTX 4060 in a smaller form factor graphics card, and that's amazing news for people who are thinking about picking this up for an OEM build or a rack mounted server build like mine. As far as pricing goes, like I said earlier, this Gigabyte LP model is sitting around $325 at the time of writing this video, and for desktop 4060s, these are creeping down to around $280. Over the years, there's always been a little bit of a premium in price of an LP card versus a desktop alternative, so that's nothing new, and honestly, I think it's a pretty fair price for what you're getting. I do want to quickly give another shout out to Gigabyte for sending out this card for me, and also let me know down in the comment section which games you think would be perfect for my couch gaming sessions. We obviously aren't going to be playing competitive first person shooters with my feet propped up and using an Xbox wireless controller, but games like the new Forza and even Starfield are pretty good on here, but I can always use some more suggestions. And if you want to see that previous home server upgrade video that I kept mentioning, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.